Let's talk about the Gojo clock theory, and spoilers beware if you're not caught up on the manga, but come on y'all, just strap in, we've only got two chapters left here. Alright, so first I want to talk about this clock from chapter 268. As you can see here, it's roughly 8 or 9 minutes before the hour. And this is from the moment where Megami, Nobra, and Yuji are like, oh, we're going to be late, we need to go meet up with Yuta and everyone else. Now, on its own, it's just a clock, right? So what's interesting about this? Well, with JJK nearing its end, I've recently gone back to the beginning of the manga to reread it just to see if I could find any narrative parallels or symmetry between the start and end of this story. And as you can see here, interestingly, in chapter three of the manga, we have this moment where Gojo is running late by exactly eight minutes. This also just happens to be after his not I'd win moment, and it includes Yaga working on cursed corpses, something we've talked about in a previous video. Maybe that could come into play with helping to save Gojo. But for the purposes of this video, we're focusing on the clock stuff. Could it be a coincidence that there was eight minutes both at the start and end of the manga? 100%. But now when we combine it with what happened in 269, it becomes a little bit more interesting. Because as you can see here, this grandfather clock is literally the star of this full page panel from chapter 269. And as you can see, the time just so happens to be 221. And I know I probably don't need to remind y'all of the significance of 221 in JJK, but that was the chapter that Gojo was unsealed from the prison realm and made his triumphant return. So that just so happens to be two clocks in two consecutive chapters that coincidentally have Gojo references or at least illusions in the time that they reference. Now, we can go even deeper in this rabbit hole here because as we saw earlier, it was about eight minutes before the hour and then this time is 21 minutes after the hour. So 29 minutes have passed and Gojo, should he be alive, would be 29 years old. There's this weird discrepancy between would he be 28 or 29 due to the time he spent in the prison realm, like does that count towards his birthday or not? But 29 minutes have passed, 29 was the age that Buddha was enlightened, and not only that, the second hand, as you can see down here, just so happens to be between the five and the six. And this is probably the most stretchy of all of it here, but if Gojo was coming back, if this was some sort of reference to that, then this could perhaps be a reference of splitting right before the six eyes, right? A potential sacrifice in order for him to come back which as I'm sure y'all are aware has long been a theory in this fandom due to all of the weird artistic symbolism surrounding Gojo and one of his eyes. He is either shown with one of them covered or one of them even like, you know, something's happening to it in so many different instances, not to mention the front page of the volume 26, 27, I can't remember exactly, where there's this sketch of Gojo with one of his eyes bursting open like this that is not from the manga. This is not a panel that we have ever seen. Is this definitive? Of course not, but it is certainly interesting, right? Especially if you've watched my channel for a while, you know we have long talked about the potential symbolism and foreshadowing as it relates to a Gojo return. So now with only two chapters left, the fact that these types of coincidences keep happening is certainly crazy if it is nothing. And then on top of all of that, I've also just found it very strange in these last couple of chapters, like how the characters are reacting to Gojo. First and foremost, he hasn't even been brought up that much, but in chapter 268, when they were reading his letters that they left him, the air of energy in that scene felt very like light and almost happy in a way and not like they were still dealing with grief that should still very much be fresh but in addition to that in chapter 269 when everyone is literally airing out all of their grievances and regrets about the battle like oh we should have done this or i should have done this i should have been the one to go get kenjaku we should have used inumaki here like people doing all of these what ifs and yet in none of them was it even mentioned like we should have done this to help Gojo in his fight against Sukuna, or we should have done this to try to save Gojo after he went down. Like, you would think in a conversation full of those types of regrets, that would have come up. I mean, they even talked about other people that passed away, but not him. And then even on top of that, the one time he is mentioned is when Kusakabe says it's his fault for not taking out Itadori from the get-go, which I think is in character for Kusakabe to say, but if you take into consideration the context of like, if Gojo is literally freshly dead and six feet under right now, and he's speaking of him that way, like, you're not supposed to speak ill of the dead, right? So that's just pretty bold and taboo, in my opinion. 
even Yuta, who is presumably like fresh out of Gojo's body in this scene, doesn't have anything to say about it. And as we saw in previous chapters, he's been the one to have like the most visceral reaction related to Gojo, both when he first went down against Sukuna and in his like monster monologue when he was talking about originally taking over the body. So you would think if anyone, he might have aired some concerns about how he had let him down or something like that. Again, it just feels like, you know, the air of the conversation is a little off if Gojo is, you know, sitting six feet under outside. And then also just where is Shoko during chapter 269? As Nobara told us at the end of 268, quote unquote, everyone was needed to go assist Yuta. And yet the doctor, the RCT specialist was not there. Now, clearly the whole Yuta situation, I don't think was like an actual life or death. It was probably more so like, hey, we need to go save Yuta from Maki because she's gonna, you know, ring him a new one. But still, Shoko not being there is a bit strange in my opinion. So if Yuta did just freshly come out of Gojo's body, is she still back with Gojo's body? And if so, why? And then the last little thing I want to talk about is that, again, how I've been reading the start of JJK in order to see if there's any narrative parallels between the beginning and end. And like I mentioned, in the third chapter of JJK, Gojo was late by eight minutes. So perhaps Gojo doesn't show up in the third to last chapter because he's running late. But instead, what if he is reintroduced in the second to last chapter to mirror the fact that he was introduced in the second chapter of the manga? And not that Gege would go line for line, bar for bar here, but it is quite interesting that this same little scenario would nicely fit in the current circumstances of the manga as well. Because as you can see here, we have Megami surprised that Gojo has shown up and says, what are you doing here? And in the current status quo of the manga, Megami 2 would be like, whoa, Gojo, what are you doing here? And also, you know, the fact that Megami has some wounds that just kind of coincidentally look like his Sukuna face scars now. Now, probably that is a coincidence, but interesting nonetheless. And then not only that, this parallel could go even further because as you can see, he asks like, what's going on with the Sukuna finger? And Yuji says, sorry, I ate it. So if Gojo does come back and is like, hey, yeah, so what ended up happening to Sukuna after I got taken out? What if Yuji goes, yeah, sorry, I ate it. Because as you guys may or may not know, my current theory is still that Yuji did consume the blob Sukuna after their fight in order to carry on living with him. The one to show you about love is, you know, I've talked about it at length, but this little scene from chapter two would also fit in the second to last chapter. So again, probably a little bit of a coincidence here, but it is just really interesting to me. Anyways, y'all, I'm gonna take off the tinfoil hat and stop rambling for this video, but with only two chapters of JJK left, I had to give you guys at least one more dose of Gojopium, and who knows, depending on what happens in 270, maybe we could still get one more. But as always, temper your expectations, don't get your hopes up too high, because these really all could just be coincidences or, you know, who knows what. So strap in, we'll have to see what happens this week, but yeah, let me know y'all's thoughts.